Welcome to the August meeting of the Acquisition SIG. Um, thanks for listening in and uh, we will get started. Um, just trying to come up with a topic that we haven't kind of covered already. Um, I stumbled across the system preferences for acquisitions. I don't know, you know, I just thought we'd go over them fairly. It, it won't take long because there's not a lot of them. Um, but I did find a couple that were like, huh, I didn't know that was there. We do things from a different way or whatever. So um, if that's okay with everybody, we will just, I will share my screen and we will jump right in. Oh, I always forget to click the share button. Okay, what do you see right now? Your screen. The, okay. The, uh, okay, so I am in the Koha US demo site for this. And um, I'm assuming everybody knows how to get to the system preferences. You from the home screen, click on administration, and then if you just uh, well, let's just go back here. You get to administration and then global system preferences to see everything. Just click on search um, with nothing in the blank, and then uh, if you click on the acquisitions tab, it will just limit you to the acquisitions preferences. Um, so if if you have any questions, jump in. Um, um, I don't know what's going on, allergies or something. But um, so the first one is under Edifact, and if you do um, EDI invoicing, you have an option here to either turn on or turn off the Edifact invoice import. Um, and on our system, we have this set to do automatically import Edifact invoice message files when they are downloaded. So the way EDI works is the vendor, whoever, will send um, the electronic invoices to a, um, a server and, and then um, Koha will go to that same server and pull the invoices off there and pull it into Koha automatically, or you can choose not to have it done automatically. Um, you know, you might want to turn that off if you're testing or doing something like that, or, you know, when you're initially um, setting things up so that you can uh, kind of manually control what's, what's going on. You can see what's happening if you run into any problems. So that's right there. That's usually set to do because that's kind of what EDI is all about is automatic uh, automating the process. So that's just the, the one preference that you have there. So under policy, we have all kinds of good stuff. So this one, I think everybody has to choose what to do here, um, whether you're using ed, uh, EDI or not. So this is ACK create item. So you can create an item and then you have three options, either when cataloging the record, when placing an order, or when receiving an order. So this was set to placing an order. That's also where we've got our set. Um, what that does is allow you to, um, or allow the patrons to place holds on the items once they've been ordered. So that's um, that's that's kind of how how we have that set up. Um, does anybody have a different setting on that uh, on your system, or is it that kind of pretty standard? I don't know what happened to my chat box. There we go. Okay. All right, 
then the next one is ACK enable files. Um, so this is do or do not enable the ability to upload and attach arbitrary files to invoices. Um, that's, you know, I don't know. We, we have it set to do in our system as well, but I don't know that we've actually ever uh, attached a file to an invoice. I would guess if it was a special case, I don't know if anybody's got a, um, a case where that would be helpful. Oh, I lied. I was on the wrong system. <laughs> okay. Like I said, all those things we had set just like they were there. Um, now I'm in the Koha US system. Okay. So the next thing is act items set subfields when receipt is canceled. So upon, can upon canceling a receipt, update the item subfields if they were created when placing an order. So we've got placing an order up here. So they were created then. So, you know, they've got examples of subfield O gets a five or subfield A gets barfu. Um, this particular one has sub subfield seven, which is not for loan, the not for loan field um, equals four. And I did go in and look at the authorized values for not for loan and there isn't a number four. So I'm not sure what that one, what that will do. Um, maybe just put a four in there. Um, but um, upon canceling a receipt, I guess you could, you know, do a couple of different things. You could, the, these obviously, if you saw the last screen, we don't have these two set, um, but I suppose you could upon canceling a receipt, um, change the not for loan to, um, I don't know, you know, have a special, <coughs> sorry, have a special um, authorized value that says um, canceled or something like that. I don't know. Hang on one second. <coughs> sorry, I didn't hit my mute. <coughs> The next one, acquisition item set subfield when received. I am, where's my water bottle? <clears throat> so upon receiving items, update the subfield if they were created when placing <clears throat> an order. So we have when placing an order. So now we set subfield seven, which is not for loan to a two, which is, oh no, it was a negative two, wasn't it? Yep, it was a tiny little negative two, <clears throat> which is in processing. Um, I suppose you could always set that first one to not for loan. And, and everybody knows, I'm sure that the negative in front um, means you can place a hold on it. And if you don't put the minus sign in front, then you can't place a hold on it. So there's that. <clears throat> I have a question, Rhonda. Okay. On the ACK item set subfields receipt canceled one where it's the seven equal four. Yeah. So I thought, I wonder what I have in my system and I have seven equal four. Okay. And I don't have a for <laughs> one value i wonder what do you have yours set to in your own system our ours is blank okay i was just we just yeah i'm not sure where it came from so i was curious yeah yeah so you know i was i was sort of tempted to create a new uh not for loan um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, see what, and happens. Say, see what happens you know authorized value for uh I'll do something original like canceled. <clears throat> so do you spell canceled with two L's or one L? I know it's a, a debate. Um, I always do two L's, but. I do two. Okay. 
so I, my husband does one L, you know, so I'm like, well, whatever. Um, so there, so I wonder if you want to play around a little bit and see what we can come up with. Um, I'm always up for playing around on a demo system. Um, I want, I think when I went, hmm. All right, so we fixed that. So then let's go back to um, <clears throat> acquisitions. And I saw there was some ordered stuff here. So we can go here and this is all ordered. So if I go to, what was that again? when receipt is canceled. Okay, so think through this with me. Um, I would not have phrased it as receipt as canceled. I would have said um, when. So is that just for canceling or does that mean you've received the item and then you want to go back and cancel the receipt because maybe you made a mistake in receiving that particular? Ooh, well, there is a really good question. I have no idea. I don't either. Should we try something? Sure. All right. So let's see. We've got... Uh, all right, so these would be just, okay, these have not been received yet. So if, uh, oh, I've gone in this strange way. Um, I guess if I go in to, these are closed, right? Yeah, I don't want so many items. Let's try test. Okay. All right, somebody walk me through. I'm having a brain freeze here. Um, well, do you want to receive a shipment and, and pay an invoice? Let's try that first. With a Let's title. See. Okay. All right. So if I do receive shipment and then I'll give it uh, today's date. I can just go to next for this thing. Okay, so these are all of my options. So if I receive it, death in focus. Well, let's say we received this one. I'll just receive one of them. And then, okay. And then I never know where the save buttons are around here. Okay. So now we've got one that's received. Now, the way this is worded, um, upon canceling a receipt. All right. So now, I would go back. I don't know that I've ever canceled a receipt. Um, so I looked it up in the manual. Yeah. And it says this preference is used in conjunction with the ACK item set subfields when received preference. If you have the system set to enter default values when you receive, you will want to have those values revert, revert back if the receipt is canceled. 
this preference allows you to do that. Okay. So the, which one was it? So it works. This in one up here. Oh, so these two work together basically. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So if, oh, okay. So first of all, we receive an item and we have it set to negative two, which is in processing. So maybe what we want to do is, re oops, oh, I lost it now. Um, let me go back here a few. There we go. So maybe we want it to be ordered instead or something like that, because that would probably be what, what would. I, I think that you've got this working right. So I, I pulled up death and focus and you've got one copy ordered and one copy in processing. So when you received it, it gave it that negative two to go in processing. So now okay. if, you, if you go back in and cancel that receipt, it shouldn't move it from in processing to canceled. Okay. So who, okay, so back here. Uh, oh, I'm now not in acquisitions anymore. Acquisitions. All right, vendor. They should all be Baker and Taylor. I okay. Think. Oh, okay. Um, I think that one was in this mystery thing, right? Yeah, so if you click on death and focus right there, or okay. no, it was in the fiction basket, I think. Oh. Okay, because that's got one. Oh, are there more pages? Yes, there are more pages. There's always more pages. Here is the here's the received one. Okay, yeah, so you're in the right place. So click on that title so you can see. You All can right, see you've got one in processing and Let's one see. ordered. All right. And then the in processing one. I think I don't know how you cancel a receipt. So I'm guessing yeah. if you go back one. Okay. Can you if try you, clicking on the go, acquisitions details tab and then yes. it should show you the basket? Yeah. That should be the way. Okay. So okay. go forward one. So, so go Actually, forward one. Oh, 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 I yeah. see. Okay. Acquisitions details tab. Mm -hmm. And Can then go to the basket where the one that has the invoice with the today's date. Okay, so the yeah. invoice number. Okay, so here I am in the basket. No, you needed to go to the invoice. To oh, the to the invoice. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so go I to. Will... Okay, now click on the invoice number. Number. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Now, this is where we go to. Uh, receipt page to receipt page and this is where you cast a receipt uh, oh okay um so that's this one right so all the way in the bottom i think because you, oh. you only had one in there oh yes okay so this is already received mm -hmm. and then to it's, all the way to the right yes cancel the receipt processing okay so you so should have canceled that already. Okay. So nothing received. Right. All right. So I'm guessing. So now click on death and focus. It's there. two. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. got two there. Mm -hmm. Now you've got one canceled. Now you've got one, one canceled, canceled and one ordered. Ah, okay. I'm a little rusty on the old. Uh, doing it the the koha way <laughs> the manual way yeah the manual way can you tell <laughs> um okay um yeah so i don't so barbara you said you had this set to a four or something on your system well my preference was the same as in the um the koha oh, in here class, you know it's seven equal four but i don't have a you don't have a four. Authorized value defined for the four. So I okay. either we 
have done it and we get no value or we've never done it. I don't recall really canceling a receipt of, of anything, but I'm okay. the one that does it all the time. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is, that is kind of interesting. And I mean, you know, if we changed it back to what was it? Negative one, I think was right. on ordered, mm -hmm. you know, that You'd would be putting be, it back in the status it came from. Yeah. Which is kind of what that description that you read mm -hmm. kind of implied. That's that, that was the purpose of the whole thing. Okay. Well, that was kind of interesting. Okay. Um, just to see, I, I didn't even realize these two things were in here because we have EDI and we set all that stuff through EDI. Um, but these are kind of handy if you don't, um, I would think. Okay, moving on. Acquisition view baskets show baskets in system regardless of owner from staff members library or created or managed by staff member so this one was set to in system regardless of owner um, i would think that these other ones would be really helpful if you had like a consortium or you know something like that uh, you know for the staff members library or if you you know had multiple people doing acquisitions or you only wanted the acquisition person to any see any of this stuff so that um, ability to limit who sees what baskets is there um, acquisition worn on duplicate invoices um, you have worn and do not worn when the librarian tries to receive an invoice with a duplicate number i think you know ours is set to worn um, also because we're trying not to have duplicate um, invoice numbers. Um, basket confirmations. When closing or reopen a basket, do not ask for confirmation or always ask for confirmation. Um, this one is set to do not ask for confirmation. I think ours is set to uh, always ask for confirmation because I know that yeah, it is. Um, because every time we go in, it, you know, if you close a basket or reopen it, it, it prompts to confirm that that's what you want to do. So I'm not sure if it's better or not, but I think that was the way it was set up when we first got on it and we just always left it that way. Ours was originally set up to ask and after a while it was just like you had to click the confirmation all the time and it just it's just me and one other person doing the stuff and we finally decided that it would be just one less click to worry about so we we turned it off and we feel okay okay with it off yeah i'm i'm actually thinking i'm going to ask holly if she you know our acquisitions person if she wants to just turn that off too cuz i don't know it might just be a comfort thing for her but yeah who knows? Um, next one is claims BCC copy. Um, don't send or send a blind copy to logged in user when sending serial or acquisition claims notices. We don't actually send claims notices through here. So I don't know, does anybody actually use this? Of the four no. libraries represented <laughs> we don't yeah we don't okay okay then um currency format display currencies in the following format so you've got us you've got chinese you got french ours is set to us um so email purchase suggestions and the email address. So choose an email address that new purchase suggestions will be sent to. This is set to none, or you can set it to the email address of the branch that's set somewhere else in um, uh, the uh, system preferences. 
um, do the email address for suggestions or the Koha admin email address. So this one is set to none. I think that's what ours is set to too. If you choose email address for suggestions, you have to enter a valid email address. So um, I guess you could have all of your purchase suggestions not only show up in the system, but you could get an email alert sent to someone. I think with the number of purchase suggestions that we get, that would just be annoying um, to somebody. So we just go in and look because there's always something there. Um, does anybody use this alert to... Um, we don't. We also felt it would just be kind of annoying. And so we do what, what y'all are doing is we kind of have one person who sort of manages it. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. with us. We yeah. Use it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't either, but I wish I could turn it on for some branches, but not all branches. Ah. Because <laughs> then yeah. like I could have my little libraries get emailed, but the big ones that have would get spam wouldn't have to get spammed. Mm hmm. Yeah, I suppose the smaller ones, if, you know, they get one purchase suggestion every, you know, three weeks or something, they don't always check. Yeah. This, the uh, thing. Yep. Okay. Um, these two next, the, the two uh, next ones, mark fields to order and mark item fields to order. Um, is used, I know by EDI. Um, so you basically, I think if I click on this, oh, they do have some stuff set in here. So um, set the mapping values for a new order line created from a mark record in a staged file. Um, so you can set up, you know, like, um, price when it comes in needs to go to the uh, 795p subfield, um, you know, quantity, budget code, and all that stuff so that, it, you know, when, um, when we get something from Ingram, say, we've got it set up so that these, these fields get filled. I'm, I'm not totally sure if that's just EDI. Barbara, do you use this stuff? Yes, we do. Okay, okay. So and it's not. Yeah, we're non EDI. Yeah, yeah. So, and then this um, mark item fields to order, you can, you can pretty much set up a item record with, you know, what's available here for, um, you know, the different subfields. So, you, you know, the branches and the eye types and, you know, all that kind of stuff you can set up so that when your items come in, they're populated already and you don't have to um, fill in all that stuff. You know, some of these, you know, your home branch, that could be really repetitive um, or, or the item type, you know, if you're ordering, if, if you're pulling in a bunch of books, you know, all of them will be books. So you don't have to redo all of that information. Um, so those are, those are two very handy uh, things to set up, you know, talking with your support provider or, you know, somebody can, uh, your vendor can help you get these things set up too. Um, so order price rounding. So this is don't round to nearest cent or it says round. Um, I determines whether full precision values or rounded values should be used in price calculations. So this was set to don't round or was it? Yeah, it was set to don't round. Um, to the nearest cent, I think ours is, oh, ours is don't round as well. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I, I just wanted to, I just joined, so I, I apologize okay. for just jumping in. Hi, everyone. 
Yeah. Um, so we had Don't Round. And it's funny because um, I guess we'd had that for a long time. And then I noticed uh-huh. we were a little bit off. Um, and then, you know, as, as the fiscal year goes on, the off by one or two cents kind of, you know, builds Gross. up. Right. Yeah. So I, I did change it to round, um, I think, mid fiscal year last year. And it helped us. Um, but oh. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. No, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah, because I'm kind of surprised that ours is set to don't round. Um, I would think you would round round it, but hmm. interesting. Okay, um, purge suggestions older than. So this is um, keep accepted or rejected purchase suggestions for a period of, and then this is a days kind of thing. Um, example, 30 days um, sets purgation, is that a word, of suggestions for those older than uh, 30 days. Um, leaving this field empty, if you leave it empty if you don't want to activate this automatic feature and this system preference requires a cron job. So ask your system administrator to set, schedule it. So we do have this set up. We keep our... Um, accepted and rejected purchase suggestions for a year, which is probably more than we need. Um, but yeah, at first there, this option wasn't even here. And as the purchase suggestions built up, that page was taking longer and longer and longer to load. So we lopped it off at a year, that's better. Um, I don't know, does anybody else have a different set up or do you not use that at all? Um, I thought we had our set up, but I checked it and it's blank. So I'm gonna have to go and oh. investigate that. Okay, okay. Yeah, cause you know, we're, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to figure out where that line is of, you know, keep it around so you can refer back to it if any questions come up, but, you know, once it gets old, it's just taking up space, you know. Um, and I, I think one of the discussions here too was wanting to keep it for a period of time in order to show our responsiveness to the public in, you know, how many things we actually purchased at their request. And that sure. maybe that's why I don't have it feel filled in. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. We have ours set to 60 days, uh-huh. um, but we still haven't figured out if when they get purged from the system, does it also erase it from the patron's record? Yeah. Like, you know what it does? So like we'll, we have a limit of... 12 suggestions per year. So if we get in rid of them every two months, then that means yeah, that they're, they're allowed they, an extra. They okay. could they could go hog wild. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's what we, we were not sure about. Okay. Yeah, because I did experiment with that where mm-hmm. um, once they got purged from the system. They mm-hmm. don't show up on on the um, the patron's, patrons record anymore. Record. Yeah, they're just ah. gone. They are gone, gone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and there is. Um, I we'll finish this, and then I, I want to go back and talk about some settings for the purchase suggestions too. Um, now that that came up, so tax rates. Um, Barbara and I don't have to worry about this in Texas, but I think California does. Am I right? Um, yes, tax we do. Rate. Okay. So tax rates are, you know, for, for us, it's zero. So, you know, you just enter in the percentage and then the first item in the list will be selected by default for more than one value separate with the pipe database will only accept up to four decimal precision. So 
for for California, do you just put in like whatever the tax rate is, and then it will automatically calculate that onto your orders? What we have, because it depends by county, and like if we buy from Amazon, it's 9.5, I believe. Okay. But if I go to the local bookstore, it's 10.25. So we have about five different ones. And also because um, like um, Christy was saying, sometimes we're off by a few pennies, mm -hmm. but now that makes sense. So I'm going to try to do round, see if that oh, okay. evens it out. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah that's, that's how we have it. We have at least four different tax uh, rates. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, I guess. And yeah, I depending. have it by vendor. Ahead. Yeah. And then okay. I, I put oh. that in the vendor record. I select then like Baker and Taylor will be 9.5. Amazon will be the same, but like my local bookstore is different and all of that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Interesting. Okay. This one is unique items field. The following database columns should be unique in an item. So this has got barcode, and I think ours has barcode and item number, which the system generates the item number. So yeah, it should be unique too. Um, and if I click on this databases column, um, this is all of them, I guess, takes you to the, uh, I don't know what this is, the schema, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Okay, and the last one, use ACK framework for biblio records. So don't use the framework ACQ for bibliographic record fields. Um, I don't even know. Ours is set to don't use as well. Um, I think that's because we use different frameworks for different vendors. So we don't use just one framework every time we use different ones. So I think that's why we have set to don't use. And then there's the order PDF format. Use the layout when printing basket groups. Okay. I don't even... I guess we just use English because, oh, there's a two page and a three page. I don't know what that is anyway. But um, the other thing, when, when you were talking about limiting, what did you say, 12 per year or something like that? Um, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, so what we did, uh, I'm not even sure where these are located. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so there's the purge one and there's the send email. Um, OPAC suggestion man managed by, this is, um, don't show the name of the staff member who managed a suggestion in the OPAC. I think ours is set to show so that we know who touched it last or whatever. Um, and then, of course, there's allow or don't allow. So I just for your information, I've been I, I put a bug out in Bugzilla for um, adding the function where you're be able to do this allow or don't allow by patron type. Um, so we're, we're thinking about, you know, kind of tiered library cards, uh, memberships, and we want, you know, some of them to be able to put purchase suggestions on and some not. Um, and I think the current, currently it's past, uh, test or whatever that is. Um, 
I just tested it yesterday and it was working fine. So that's a feature that um, hopefully will get added like a year down the road or whatever it is in the next release. Anyway, so there, um, Victoria, I, I'm sure you're aware of these two things to control your patron suggestions. Um, the first one is limit patrons to and then you can put, you know, a number in there of open suggestions. So as long as they're in the pending, as long as a suggestion is in the pending category, it's considered open. Um, if you move it out of the pending category into, you know, uh, what is it, rejected or accepted or checked or anything like that, then I'll, it's not an open um, suggestion anymore. So. Um, you could limit them that way. We didn't find that real effective because part of our process was to, um, we have tabs set up for all the collection developers. And you know we have somebody every day that checks and moves stuff mm -hmm. into the appropriate collection developers tab. So as mm -hmm. soon as we did that, they were no longer open suggestions and the people, you know, they could just suggest the way. So, so we, it only limits them when they're independent files. Yes. Okay. Yes, we discovered that the hard way. Um, ah, yeah. So did I know that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and and so we were kind of the impetus behind getting this second one, mm -hmm. which is limiting the number of total suggestions allowed mm -hmm. um, in so many days. So this is like you know, ours is set up to allow three in a rolling 30 days, okay. you know, so they, they can only make um, three suggestions and then they are frozen out for another 30 days. Currently, this is broken, but <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's supposed to be fixed in the, the next micro release of Koha. Mm -hmm. So it, it should be back fairly quickly, yeah. mm -hmm. but um, this is so, what we use. Go ahead. So if you put two uh -huh. in 30 days, then that we're giving them like 12 them a year, which is our main. Right. Well, if you put two, two in 30 days, they'd get 24 in a year. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you could you could say you know twelve in three hundred sixty five days. Three hundred sixty. Okay. You know, and then that would limit them. You know, mm -hmm. they could put them all in in May if they wanted to, but then they would be. And it's a rolling. It's a rolling three hundred sixty five days. So they wouldn't be able to put any more in until the next, next May. Time. Okay. Yeah. So, but that that's supposed to be fixed in the uh, twenty. What is it? Twenty one eleven point six. Mm -hmm. um, that that's supposed to be fixed. It was working great there for a while, but then wow. broke. Okay. But I Thank just you. yeah yeah I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Um, and then of course you know you can you can set um, customize your forms with fields that should be mandatory for purchase suggestions. So then you can click, you know, uh, obviously the, uh, you know, we have author selected and we have title selected and I don't know what else, but um, it would, you know, those, oh, I think um, item type, you know, just so that they make sure that they pick whatever, you know, that's kind of to cover them because if they're thinking ebook, you know, and they don't um, select anything, then that's frustrating for them if they end up with a book, you know. Um, and then these are the unwanted fields. So if you don't care about, you know, the patron reason or the publication date, I mean, place, um, I guess, maybe the reason might be helpful, but, um, oh, we hid quantity because they're only getting one. Um, they can put 12 in there if they want, but it doesn't matter. And then OPAC view other suggestions. Um, so this is on the OPAC. Um, 
we've got this to don't show, but you could set it to show purchase suggestions from other patrons on the OPAC so everybody could see what everybody else is suggesting. We didn't think people would really want that. Um, so sometimes they suggest things that are private. Um, so there's, um, there's some in, uh, stuff about purchase suggestions, which is sort of related to acquisitions. And- um, Thank you. Yep. Oh, somehow we got 50 minutes in. I didn't think this would take very long. Um, so anything else? Um, oh, I guess there's two more uh, suggestions. So don't allow patrons that aren't logged in to make purchase suggestions. We've got that set to don't allow. They have to actually be logged in before they can make a purchase suggestion because we want to make sure that they're um, library card holders. And then, and then I guess if you have an anonymous patron, you set up something. Wanda, on the, um, under the policy, under the OPAC view, other suggestions where you have don't show. Yes. Um, we have show and okay. um, I would assume, and I'm not sure if you know the answer, that it wouldn't say like Rhonda or Christy has X title um, suggested. Wouldn't, would it be anonymous or do you know? I do not know because we've never turned that on. Um, I don't know how we would even go about testing that. If I said show and then, oh, okay. We, all right. So then if I go here, uh, I'm logged in. I go to, uh, Oh, okay. So you have to be in the OPAC, right? <laughs> Good point. No wonder I'm so confused. Okay. I think this is all the way down here. There's the OPAC. All right. So I set it. Okay, so if I make a purchase suggestion, um, okay, so this is a title of a book, an author is now required, uh, Jane Doe, and nope, not reason, where's the item type, here it is. We want this in book and submit. Okay. So now where would one go? We go to that drop down the where it says suggested by me and see if there's a sorry Jason. See oh, if might oh. Say. yeah. I didn't even oh. And I also think under the search bar that purchase suggestions link is new. If you scroll up just a little. Uh, up, up, uh, up. under the main search bar there's a between oh. most popular and i think that oh yeah yep okay so it's not giving the person suggestion it's not ah uh, okay i okay. need to purchase this entire seat you know sometimes they put obnoxious notes in it but that's okay um okay i had just never explored that before thank you yep so, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Any any other questions? I've actually learned a few things today. Good morning, Martha. Um, I'm gonna um have to rewatch this because I joined late, but I wanted to throw out there. I know that Rhonda, you, and there's another um, Marcy in Texas. We mm -hmm. had been in conversations regarding overlaying of records. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, which has been kind of a big bear. Um, so I've tried to write some matching rules, realizing the matching rules, however we write them, are not going to work. I've been in discussion with Bywater 
So now we're at the stage of submitting for a quote. Um, and as I understand it, other ILSs are able to append and not overlay all the records. So I'm gonna send it to development, but I just wanted to know if other libraries, I'm throwing it out there, I know we're at the last minute, may be interested in joining in if there's, I don't know how much those costs, those development requests. Yeah, yeah, they, they vary widely depending on how much work. You know, we've had $500 quotes and we've had $4,000 quotes. Um, okay. Maybe even $5,000 quotes. Um, just depending on on how complicated it is, how many hours their developers need to spend on it. Because we're at the point where we need to set up new accounts, as I think others are um, for ordering any duplicate titles, so we don't overlay our existing records. Okay. Um, but I'm thinking that um, down the road, Koha Development will want to use this, and it, I put in a bug. Um, oh. And it's basically, I'm trying to find what it is, but it's basically, um, I think it's 31092. Um, and it's basically telling to append on the leader record um, in the bib. So leader records have different numbers and depending on what, um, when you do a batch item um, import, it would see like, oh, well, this, this matches, this is a full record. We're not gonna append it. This is not a full record. We're gonna overlay it. So um, anyway, again, I know we're at the last minutes, but I wanted to throw that out there. And if any of you wanna look at that bug, the 31092. Um, All right. And maybe we could look at it for next month um, to see okay. if anyone has any ideas. So thanks. Okay. Yeah, it's good to know. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll definitely look at that. I'm going to pass the catalogers, see what they think. Um, does anybody else have anything they wanted to add? You have. Okay. Well, then I would say. Everybody should have a great rest of your day. And um, I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I know it's uh, most summer reading programs are over and now we're moving into the school year. Um, so, and, it, and fellow Texans, stay cool. <laughs> it's just hot. Um, so we'll see you all next month. If not, oh, I lied. No, we need to see you next month, but in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, that's when our next meeting will be. So our next meeting will be at the conference. So if you're there, um, get to meet you in person. And if you're going to participate online, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we are going to be uh, broadcasting the SIG meetings um, from the conference. So um, we'll see you there. And yeah, if, if you're planning on coming in person, looking forward to seeing you and Maybe we can get everybody from the acquisition SIG to go out to lunch one day just to um, get to know each other a little better. And then um, it'd be, I know when I get to meet somebody face to face, it's easier for me to contact them later through the year um, and just, you know, ask questions and things like that. So, um, so we'll see you all next month, but it will be from Lawrence, Kansas. So have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.